Hello, I'm Peter Chen from the Harvest Medical Practice and this is a short video about type 2 diabetes and maybe the bit just before it. How to make big lifestyle changes to improve your diabetic control and maybe even reverse it. Well we've drawn the family short straw yet again. We've come to the supermarket to try and work out what is best to eat if you've got type 2 diabetes. And to be honest with you, it's got a bit confusing and a trip to the supermarket can feel like you're an investigative journalist looking for what's good, what's bad and being alert to the hidden traps such as the low fat but high sugar labelling. So rather than giving you an exhausting list, we're just going to try and leave you with three top tips to try and improve your diet and therefore your diabetic control. Well, the first tip couldn't be simpler and it's just to eat more vegetables and fruit. Try and eat the rainbow of colours that different vegetables and fruit provide. And that way, you'll get the widest range of nutrients. They seem to be particularly good for us. It may be due to an effect on our gut microbiome. These are the trillions of bacteria that live in our guts. And they seem to be increasingly important to our digestive, endocrine, immune, and even our mental health. In diabetes, we used to be a little bit more worried about fruit, but we now know that it is good for you. The best fruit are those orchard fruits that are a bit less sweet than the softer fruits. So dive in and eat the rainbow. Well, the second tip is just to try and eat an unprocessed diet. So what do we mean by that? Well, if you're diabetic, you really want to know what you're eating. And processed food is really just food that's gone through a factory and had stuff added. So this is pork, it's just pig. If we want to turn it into ham, well, we're going to need to add a few more ingredients, probably at least five, plus the water. These are going to include sugar, salt, triphosphates, sodium ascorbate, and sodium nitrite, whatever they do. Bacon is going to be similar. And think about trying to cook from scratch. So if I want to make a cottage pie, I'm going to need some onion, some garlic, I'm going to need some olive oil, then my beef, some carrot, maybe some celery, mashed potato with potato, small amount of butter, bit of pepper, it's going to be delicious. But if I want my favourite grocer to make my cottage pie, well he's going to need another 42 ingredients. And think about processed drinks as well, because even diet drinks are probably not very good for us. If you want to follow this doctor's advice, you're going to need at least 23 chemicals just to get the flavour. Well, it's half past nine. I'm just in from work. I'm tired. There's nothing to eat. I found a pot noodle with some mini cheddars. Apparently, I bought a kettle or a fork. I'm just going to see what's telly. Or maybe not, because tip number three is that how and when you eat is probably just as important as what you eat. So try not to eat angry. It's best to eat as many of your meals as possible, sat around a table together with friends or family. You eat more mindfully and more slowly. You probably eat less. And also there's emerging evidence about time restricted eating. Now this isn't fasting, but it's just trying to eat all of your food within a day in as short a window of time as possible. So eating your breakfast a bit later, or your evening meal a bit earlier, and avoiding snacking before you go to bed. It may be that it works because it allows our gut microbiome we met earlier to replenish themselves through the night. And you don't consume empty foods when your gut really isn't ready to process it properly. I'm not gonna have the pot noodle. Well, next it's about moving more and trying to lead as active a lifestyle as you possibly can. It's gonna make a huge difference to your diabetic control, not just by lowering your sugar levels, lowering your blood pressure, even improving your cholesterol, but also your emotional well-being. So set yourself small, achievable goals and then knock it out of the park. Do as much as you can. 
If walking's about all you can manage, well, fantastic, good on you. Try and walk as much as you possibly can. If you're fit and well enough to get the lycra on, well, get out, pound the streets, get on the bike, get in the pool. It'll transform your diabetic control. Well, believe it or not, dealing with stress and learning how to relax can actually improve your diabetic control. When we're stressed, our bodies release stress hormones such as cortisol that actually increase our blood sugar levels and worsen our diabetic control. So prioritizing time to relax and de-stress can actually improve your diabetic control. Well, another factor that it might surprise you can improve your diabetic control is actually to sleep a bit more. It turns out that sleeping more makes our bodies more sensitive to insulin, which is the main hormone that's gonna remove sugar from our blood. So try and get to bed a bit earlier and prioritize sleep. It is so difficult in today's busy world, especially with such incredible content on YouTube, but it will improve your diabetic control. And if you're struggling to get a good night's sleep, have a look at our video about high blood pressure, where we talk about some of the factors that can improve the quality of your sleep in more detail. Good night. Well, next, I'm afraid we're gonna to need to talk about feet. It turns out my feet are particularly horrible. So sorry about that. If you're diabetic, you're gonna to need to look after your feet an awful lot better. The reason is that diabetes can affect the nerve supply to your feet. And that means that your feet can rub against footwear and cause a problem when you don't even know it. You can also get problems with the blood supply, which means that any problems are harder to heal up. And unfortunately, because of the diabetes, are also more likely to get infected. So check your feet regularly. And if you're not sure about something, show it to somebody. Maybe done on YouTube. And have a think about your footwear too. Make sure that it's wide enough. One good trick is to stand on a bit of paper, draw around your foot, and then see whether your foot actually fits inside your shoe. Not too bad. And I think that's enough. The message we want to get across is that type 2 diabetes is a condition that should be managed first and foremost and at every stage by lifestyle changes first. There's a whole heap of things that you can do, but the messages have got quite complicated and it can be hard to know where to start. So just pick something. Some are easier than others. So what appeals? What do you think will make the biggest difference? But most importantly, what do you think you can do? Even the smallest changes can make the biggest difference. And if you add them all up, they can transform your diabetic control. So enjoy the changes. Good luck. And thank you so much for watching.